Is this garden vegetable perfect for your salads, for your menstrual problems, and potentially even for asthma? Let's find out. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. And this particular plant right here is commonly called purslane. In the Latin, it's called uh, Portulaca oleracea. Now, the reason why sometimes they, you would actually, in the wild edible world, know the actual Latin names of plants is because um, some of these plants, like this plant is also, one of the common names is pigweed. Amaranth is also called pigweed. Uh, lamb's quarters is also called pigweed. So when you may look at the same plant, people have multiple different names for it. But when it comes to the Latin name, typically anyway, you're going to have one standardized name so that you know what you're actually looking at and you're going to ultimately eat. But we simply call this purslane. Uh, I've eaten this for years with family. It's a common Mediterranean dish and it was made its way here to uh, the North America potentially though actually it came it was pre-Columbian from before the time of Columbus uh, so maybe it actually is some kind of native we're not hundred percent sure but they've they found actually uh, from the, somewhere between the 13th to the 16th century they found uh, purslane in this country at least they found you know in the record somehow I don't know how you do that but that's what they say so it could be pre-Columbian but the question is what are some of the benefits of this now this plant is probably as far as green like leaf vegetables is the highest source of omega-3 or one of the very highest sources of omega-3 now it's not going to be as, as high as something like flax or chia seed but as far as the it, it's i think like two times higher than kale and uh, it's just just a great food overall it's high in vitamin c and magnesium and vitamin e and uh so it's just it's just a great plant to eat but you may be looking now i'm here at the convergence of my uh my watermelon my alibaba watermelon and some of my beans and my corn and you say chad but you've done a horrible job at at uh weeding right there now actually in this case it was on purpose one of the interesting things about this plant is that it digs deep roots to gather up the nutrition from deep in the soil and what it can actually be is a companion plant to corn I didn't plant it here, it actually just grew up as a volunteer, but we love to eat it and we've eaten more of this purslane plant in our salads this summer than we have from even our lettuce. Our lettuce just didn't do very well this summer. It was just very bitter and not very nice and then it bolted. Uh, but this is something that just, just grows and it grows all over the contiguous uh, 48 states. Um, actually. You may not have known, but it's actually called the conterminous. That's the proper name for the lower 48, the conterminous United States. And um, not that that matters, but it grows in basically all the 48. It grows all the way. It goes in lower Canada and the west coast of British Columbia, all the way up to basically uh, just below Alaska there. And so it grows almost all over the place and around much of the world. And so if you know this plant and you're around the world and you needed something, some fresh food, there it is. You can go pick it and eat it. It grows up in sidewalks and these kind of things. It's just, it's all over the place and it's very healthy and it also tastes very good. We enjoy it. I enjoy it just as much as any salad out there. And uh, now the thing is though, when you're looking at wild edible plants, often there are something that are called lookalikes. Lookalikes are plants that, well, look like the plant that you're hoping to eat and actually if you look around the area even here there is a plant that's growing and um, this is apparently what's called the common spur which doesn't have these uh, thick it has very very thin stems to it connecting the leaves uh, whereas when you look at the the purslane here it has these thick tubes these very healthy looking uh, john callis one of the great authors of wild edible plants he, he refers to them looking like plumbing like tubes or or pipes rather that go through your house and he said you know just kind of an easy way to remember it often they're they're a pinkish color but sometimes they're actually green even on the purslane plant itself and they they have these kind of succulent leaves but they're not tremendously succulent when they're younger uh, at least i generally find them to be more succulent as they grow older they they flatten out a bit and one of the things you can find it i don't see any right now so i wish i could show you some uh, they look like they've already sent their seed out but they have these tiny little uh, they call them bird nests with tiny little black eggs in them and the eggs are edible too and we'll look at the research on them and uh, so this is a great plant to know about, but you don't want to eat the common spurge that is uh, apparently not healthy, not good for you, but they do look somewhat similar if you're not used to it. And so you can make a healthy salad. You can make a salad out of this one and you can mix in some onions and maybe some herbs like oregano or basil and uh, enjoy this yourself. 
one of the one of the things that Samuel Thayer, who I believe is one of the very greatest wild edible writers today, uh, he says that you should get to know wild edible plants as well as you know a banana. So if somebody came to you with an apple and said, "Hey, have a banana," and you look at an apple and you say, "This isn't an, this isn't a banana. This is an apple," and they say, "No, no, no, it's it, it's it's a banana," you would never believe them. You wouldn't be like persuaded that they were you know, uh, accurate that an apple is a banana, you know the difference. When you see a banana, you know, what a, you know what a banana is. Now, you can actually have that. And one of the things that's suggested is have at least three books, different uh, wild edible plant books, and be able to identify it accurately in each of these uh, books. Now, you don't need to know all of the poisonous plants. You need to know 100% sure that you're getting the good plant. And we have learned, uh, my, my family's known for years, my in-laws, my wife and the in-laws, they've eaten them uh, back in, I believe, Greece, or at least for sure back in Iraq. It's just a common plant around the world. It's a Mediterranean food, as I said, and um, you can eat it too, and we do on a regular basis. Now, uh, this particular plant is, uh, as I already said, it's a companion plant to corn, and as it delves deep, the roots from the corn can actually delve deep with it, and so it can actually help bring nutrition to the corn so it can actually you can actually leave this growing amongst your crop of corn which is exactly what I'm doing right here. Now uh, let's look at the this particular plant purslane and its effect on something called abnormal uterine bleeding or AUB. So a small study was conducted on women with AUB or abnormal uterine bleeding. And at the beginning of their menstruation, the women were given five grams of purslane seeds every four hours for the first 48 hours of their cycle. 80% of the women in the study stated that their period had normalized. It lowered their bleeding and it shortened the time span of their bleeding. Now, this is incredible. I mean, I'm sure if, obviously I've never had to deal with this, but if I had, I can imagine if I would have this terrible bleeding problem that I would love to actually normalize it. And thinking of this, one of the things I believe is that many of the maladies and the health issues that people live with and suffer with are actually as a result of a deficiency in nutrition. Maybe even micronutrients and things that researchers don't even fully know about yet. But if we eat a good diversity of the, the food that God has made for our bodies to, to eat, to nourish us, and to help us, our bodies to function properly, if we, uh, if we eat enough of them, and not too much of them by the way also, that what will happen is our bodies just begin to function the way they were designed to. And um, I'll get more into that later. But let's go further on to purslane and its effect on asthma. A small study found that oral administration of 5% boiled extract or 0.25 milliliters per kilogram of purslane given to asthmatics was as successful at opening airways as the medication theophylline. Now, this is incredible. This is incredible that, that taking some of this plant and mixing it in this aqueous, basically with, mixing it with water, um, could actually, by taking this, administering this to patients who had asthma, that it was as beneficial as medication. And so could it be that we are, most of us are not born lacking medication, right? Like we weren't born, uh, for instance, myself, when I grew up, I ate junk food all the time. I hardly ate any whole foods. And when, when I say whole, I don't mean that it has to, everything has to be raw, but whole foods in their natural form, you can cook them, you can eat them raw. And I hardly ate any of them. And I could, I don't ever remember as a child being able to breathe out of both of my nostrils. I literally was, was stuffed up nearly 100% of the time. And the only time I was able to breathe uh, out of both nostrils is when I was taking nasal spray. Do you think I was born with a deficiency of nasal spray? No, right? Meaning, and then later on in my life, actually it was in college age, where when my diet changed to a whole food plant-based diet, I began to breathe normal, like normal people do. So it wasn't it wasn't that, uh, I mean, there's other factors too, and I'll, I'll do a video on that, things that can actually help reverse allergies. Powerful information that's out there, powerful research and personal experience and testimonies. But here's the thing. So if we begin to eat food, and I'm not just saying to eat purslane, this is just one of the great plants that God has given to us. But as we learn to eat these things, and we learn to eat a diversity of, of plant-based foods, and the diversity is very, very important. 
that our body will begin to get the nutrition that it needs, it will begin to function properly, will feel better than maybe ever, and I began to eat even better when I was about 35, and I began to have more energy at that point than I had had ever in my entire life, even more than I was eight, at 18 or 16 years of age. And so learning to, to eat this kind of thing and various different plants out there, it doesn't have to be just this. Uh, the great thing is if you're allergic to one thing, there's other things out there anyway. And um, getting back to a simple, healthy lifestyle. And by the way, what a day to be alive, huh? that we have this opportunity just to live another day. I'm so happy to be here, and uh, I hope the best for you. We have many more videos coming out, uh, and I've already done some, on scientific natural remedies and other principles of country living and, and uh, homesteading. So if you want to learn more, uh, you know, if you like this video, you can you know, hit the like button, you can subscribe. I uh, hope the best for you. God bless, and have a great day.